Hey, hey, spread and love the Brooklyn way. Charlie Mack here with good guest, Greg Silver Stack a holic. One thing for in a minute late this time, just because we wanted to make sure we brought you some quality stuff. So we were playing around behind the scenes in the green room. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that cool YouTube stuff that you got to do. Uh, once again, for those who don't know me, Charlie Mack, Brooklyn, New York. You can find me on Instagram and LinkedIn, all that cool, fun stuff. Got my guest on that side. I forget with the camera. This Greg one's... is on that way. Other way. You the military right. I mean, that way. Yeah. yeah. That way. This <laughs> that way. Silver Stackaholic, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only. I uh, want to thank you for being part. I appreciate you jumping in today. Uh, tell the little people about yourself and where you're from, and then we're going to show them a cool video about yourself. Sure. Yeah, I am. I'm Greg, also known as Silver Stackaholic, out here in California in the Bay Area. Um, gosh, a little bit about myself. What, what should I share? What's what's appropriate? Hmm. Uh, uh, you know what? Well, we're going to dig a little deeper. I got some tough okay. questions for okay. you. Yeah, You're scaring me now. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to put the good Brooklyn touch on yeah. everything. I see we got a lot of questions coming in. There's a lot of chat coming in. Guys, have your questions ready. Ladies, have your questions ready. We are going to put the chat up. So when you have questions, we are going to go to them. Get to know our guest for today. We'll talk a little bit about him, where he's from, what he does. Because if you don't know, you are missing out. I uh, wanted to briefly go over a quick video just to kind of showcase some of your really cool work. I love it, folks. You got to check them out. Join it. Let's take a quick sneak peek. I remember this one. That's my family. Oh. Good night. Oh, look at that burn. Oh, yeah. Laser engraving just as cool. Can't go wrong with that. I like this. I want to get this Polish enough making it to the Yeah, so we back a little bit. Yeah. That was cool to the metal float out and then the two brought it back to the bowl. It was that so was cool stuff. I remember the one piece because it was my family crest and yeah. you know. One of the other things I'll you know show off because that night you made uh, a special art yeah, part right. thirty minutes or less. Could not go wrong. Yeah, <laughs> and we designed that one online. Yeah, online yeah. live. Yeah. So folks, if you have an idea, right he'll right. make it come true. Yeah. That was also uh, the start of the prototype dragon series I got from you. Really, really cool stuff. I mean, you you did uh, the yin yang double dragon. This is the prototype right here. This is not going anywhere. Um, also, the 3D stacking NYC. Yeah, those are neat. There's not a lot out there. There's is that the is that the one that's uh, uh, got the colorized or is it the antique stuff? Ah, uh, antique. I did not win the colorized. colorized. One. Yeah, I, I, Tommy and I were talking about making another one because we did uh, daylight. We want to do a, like a sunset or a skyline one. New different different versions of it. So that was beautiful that piece, and um, you know, silver is cool. It's stuff you can collect as a hobby, artwork, and then you know you get your little favorite uh, movie creature. <laughs> Don't give that thing water, man. I'm telling you, bad things. No happen. water. It, it's before <laughs> midnight, so yeah, gotta, gotta get Gizmo. Hey, well, actually, there's there's the Gizmo Proto. So that's that's the print. So that's what next. Right, and then I've got two gizmos we're doing. We're doing this guy, and I also have Rambo gizmos because you got you got to do it the, you know. You got it. Yeah, just 
It's Gizmo. You got to get Gizmo for sure. Yeah. So for those who want to get a little more information and look up some stuff, I'm just going to put up the website information there um, just so people can have it. Um, once again, silverstackaholic.com. Really, really cool stuff. If you got an idea, that gentleman right there will make it happen. Yeah, Silver Wildcat, we should do that. You know, Maybe, maybe I'll get one of those online again because those are fun. You know, we, we get a bunch of people together. We design it real time. Emma makes all the molds. I'm getting the metal ready and... We pull them right there live for everybody to actually get to see your part made. So it's kind of fun. That I, you just kind of make them right there for you. So. That that was a cool night. You know, it was a Saturday yeah. night. Half an hour. I got one pour, made, poured, envelope to my oh, house. Yeah. A couple days. There's a whole day of finishing the next day. But, but it looks good. It's, re it's ready to be admired. Let's put it that way. <laughs> a little, little show and tell time. I know. While we were talking earlier, you have a bunch of stuff ready to kind of show off. Um, yeah, you know, sure. I'm going to start getting into some tough questions about you so that people can know a little bit more about you and your journey through this. Uh oh. Uh, Silver Stackaholic yeah, is hiding behind the scenes. He's got yeah, all the gizmos. Yeah. Yeah. Come this way. Hey, Boxy. Hey, Tommy. Yeah, sure. Adam, how are you? Uh, Selfish Jim, what's up? Guys, check out his cool stuff. Um, I'm going to take questions in a little bit. Make sure you hit the like button, share, subscribe, all that cool YouTube stuff. I, just, you know, I, got, I like looking at my C-Mac piece right well, there. Yeah, you got, you got to open with that, right? But, yeah, so a lot of folks are asking me and kind of hitting us up around, you know, what are what are the different types of pouring? You know, how do you – what? what are some of the uh, materials, the molds, the, you know, the UV, just like all kinds of questions around printers. And just, I got that just a, a plethora of questions that, that, that Charlie and I got. So I figured I'd want to throw a couple of things out here and answer some of those and kind of spark some, some questions from the tribe. Anybody wants to ask something, you know, throw it in the chat. I'm not going to be able to see the chat while I'm, while I'm chatting. So, so mm -hmm. Charlie, if you want to read them out and whatnot, but, First things first, when when I go through my process, I work with a couple of different types of resins, right? So cool. in my space, I work with, um, I do Lost Wax, which is a casting system. I do Graphite, which is a, like a traditional pour into the into the frame kind of thing. We also do sand casting, and we, we play with all kinds of stuff. So with these, my big go-tos are 3D RS hard, because that's what I use for all my prototyping. If you got a 3D resin printer, get this stuff, right? Everything, we, we, we test with that. So everything that we make out of silver, first we print it out of this so we can see, touch, and kind of measure and make sure that it's gonna look right before we waste the really, really, really expensive stuff. You know, because there's different kinds of resins, right? There's resins for, you know, printing out things that are meant to be just printed and that's it and then there's this type of resin which is the same model but it's made from a wax so as opposed to hand carving it i can print this out of my 3d printer screw it up and then i end up with this one almost worked Very cool. one of my silver vixens oh yeah i got a spider-man on the table still for sure i yeah, think you have to pour a shirt for that young lady yeah <laughs> no and then we do a lot of custom stuff like this is for tucker mooney everybody knows pops back in 2019 yes. we were playing around and i had a screenshot of him and then we we put his face and this below it and he made i made a couple of t-bars last week and this one's actually big chris is sitting next to me oh but, cool uh, we, might, we might bring the t-bar back there it goes now it's in focus we might bring the t-bar back i don't know from the 999 mine series but it's one of the molds we make. But yeah, so so from a resin perspective, use this stuff if you're gonna prototype. Use something like this if you're gonna print, because that's your that's your uh, your your staple, your real go-to. Um and then uh, now what is the typical um let's just say someone is brand new like myself. I've had wild dreams of pouring. <laughs> I'm gonna burn I'm gonna burn my house down uh because I don't know what I really should buy. Um, so let's kind of like start from the beginning. Like what yeah. should someone invest in? You know, I'll tell you what, let me do this. I am going to 
turn my camera off. Why don't you uh, share my screen now? Oh, okay. we'll, go, we'll go ahead and talk about that real quick. Right. Um, let's see here. So, tools of the trade. Tools of the trade. Ah. A couple of things you're going to absolutely need no matter what. Right? You got to melt your melt. Right? That's kind of a no-brainer. Um, there's different types of systems out there. Um, this this is what most people pick up, you know, to get into the space. Not a huge investment, which is nice. Um, a lot of folks use this guy. Uh, it it it's not a uh, a commercial grade machine, but they do really really well. I have a couple different versions of this thing that has a crucible that drops in the top versus the front loader. If I were to do it all again, I'd probably buy this one. Um, but a word of warning to people that do, um, see these here, those are exposed coils, right? That's where the heat comes from. So when you put your crucible in there, which is conductive, make sure it doesn't touch those coils. And when you're sticking your, uh, uh, little fingers in there and your tools, right? To grab your stuff, your crucibles, don't let that touch that coil either. Cause bad things will happen, right? Just a PSA right there. Um, Game time. And, hello. Yeah, yeah. And then from a printer perspective, right, with my stuff, I like any cubic. Um, I myself have a couple of different printers um, within the Photon series because that's the, the resin guy. The Mono X is the big daddy. That's And what I mean by that is that when you're looking at a printer and you want to figure out what type of tools to put in your shop, you got to think about volume, right, productivity, things like that. With this guy, he's got a much larger build plate, which means that I can produce more product in a single run than a, a comparable printer in the same family has a smaller build plate, something like a mono, right? So this guy literally has almost double. I've got a couple of these in the shop. I bought this, and the minute I added the, the mono X, I simply stopped using my other one. It's kind of funny, uh, but I, I'm in love with my mono X, so I highly recommend it. Um, I use it for all my resin too, the hard resin or the castable stuff, anything. I, it'll, it'll do the job. Um, everything's pretty compatible with it too. And then the other piece you got to figure out is, you know, where do you, where do you go to kind of start? And for me, I wanted to go and find all the free stuff and figure out, you know, what I can feed to my printer, and then feed it to my furnace, right? And then Sandcast, that's how I got started. So for me, the journey was, you know, buy one of these bad boys, buy a printer. And I actually have an old FDM style printer and actually started with that at first and printed my molds there and then moved into resin when that technology, you know, advanced itself a bit. And then I started searching around and found 3D cults. So anybody who's looking for molds and looking for, uh, you know, uh, uh, the free stuff or even licensed things, really good place to go. Um, we came in here the other day and I was looking for like Viking molds. So, can I just spell it? Uh, Sean had made a comment on the furnace that you showed. Is that quicker to heat up your items? Well, that's the thing, right? There, there's, there's a, a, it's all about the size of the crucible and how much metal's in it. Um, in addition to the overall efficiency of the thing, right? Because th this guy is going to operate at a regulated temperature, right? He's going to be at whatever melting temperature you you set within the CPU, right? And it's going to got a little thermal couple right there. It regulates it and it makes sure it's your ideal temp. Um, if you put a bunch of stuff in here, it's going to be less efficient, right? If you put less stuff and space it out correctly so you can um, allow airflow and things like that, things happen quicker. It really depends on a couple of things, size of crucible, the amount of material you're putting in. You, know, you, you kind of learn what works. I've seen folks use, um, and it works really well, a bunch of really small, like one ounce, two ounce crucibles, and you stack them all in. They're all preloaded, right? They're all ready to go. And then you pluck them out and have all your molds ready to go in the assembly line. So you pluck it out, pour, pluck it out, pour, pluck it out, pour. Then you throw them all back in, and then you have another round. So you could, you know, have a speed round of pouring if you if you know how to synchronize your work. Very cool. Very smart too. And that's yeah. very important. I know 
you have to kind of pre-plan your work in advance. You do. You do. Yeah. Because when you're playing with something that's, you know, 2000 degrees or ish, you know, bad things can happen if you're not ready to deal with it. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of learning uh, surprises that I, I, I'm one of them. I was really lucky to walk away from when I learned about thermal expansion. Um, but yeah, you can, you can really hurt yourself folks. You know, you're this, this thing is really a license to, to really hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, the owner's manual says turn it on and stick something in it and that's pretty much all they tell you so it's the taking it out part that that becomes a challenge uh i'm gonna type a, a funny question in there as well but uh in all seriousness you know safety is important yeah, absolutely but what type of uh, safety equipment should a person have right i would say obviously because i teach this stuff what type of portable fire extinguisher should i have oh yeah yeah, uh, I don't know about the type. I could be wrong, but, but I have just a standard ABC. You know, yeah, ABC. Yeah, I, I have a number of them around the shop, um, in different strategic places in case I have a problem. Um, I've never had to use one. Um, the other thing I really, really recommend is that you know, sometimes silver can or any metal really, it's hot, right? And when you're pouring it into something, there's a variance of temperature, and things happen. Things pop. Things go flying. They splatter. You know, you could get unpredictable, you know, behaviors. So your your best chance at not getting hurt is to wear a proper apron. I do sometimes. Huh? Um, if you're really <laughs> smart, you wear spats, you know, to cover your feet because it's going to flow down. And the nice thing about silver is that when it, when it gets exposed, it cools super quick. So if you screw up and you overflow a mold, odds are it may cool before it hits the table if you got insulating bricks and things like that. Um, which is another thing you can you can put in there. Oh, how long do you like your silver set at temp before pouring? That's an interesting one. Um, for for me, I have a I have a thermal gun, so I actually measure the temperature of the material before I pour. So there's no guesswork. Um, I have a target temp. I question the thermal couple. I trust nothing, and I point my you know thermal gun at it, and it it tells me when to pour. So it I don't. I haven't really noticed, a, and maybe it's my, my ignorance or inexperience, but I've never noticed a big difference if I let it sit at temp for a minute or when I, I'm doing other stuff and I forget about it, it's in there for 20, it's still the same temp. You know, I haven't, I haven't noticed a difference in the, in the outcome. Yeah, you, know, you, you kind of answered it a little bit. I was going to say, um, I've seen videos of people trying to pour. They, I'm guessing they didn't calculate how much stuff they had in there burning. Mm -hmm. When they pour, I have seen it pop back up at them. And is that oh, yeah. part of the process? That can happen too, yeah, over pours and stuff. But the biggest mistake I see people making is they don't account for the thermal piece. So when you take something really, really hot and you introduce it to something really, really cold, you get a reaction, right? So if you don't heat up your uh, graphite mold to the proper temp, you can get popping or you can get where the silver just dries into a clump immediately and doesn't flow because it just cools upon itself and you get this kind of ice cream cone looking look is it is it kind of melts and then hot stuff lands and it melts and hot stuff it looks cool making that's the other thing you can play with i'll tell you that the temperature of the graphite molds introduces some interesting textures but uh it's a little tidbit but uh yeah it's it's all about the temp it really is um yeah and you can pour too cold yeah and, and the thing is right the metal's got to be hotter than its than its actual melt temp because when it leaves your crucible, it's cooling the minute it leaves it, right? So make sure your crucible's hot all the way to the top. I see guys pouring, and the base of their crucible's glowing red, and then it it slowly you know fades out to an orange, yellow, or even black at the top spout. You know it's it's not going to pour right. You may get lucky and it'll work, but that metal is cooling as it's leaving the crucible, and it's. It's not at the same temp it was at the bottom when it hits the metal. It hits the, the hole. You know what I mean? So you got to you gotta figure out the math to make sure that you're pouring and it has a chance to take the form before it cools. You got to give the metal a chance, you know? Got a new question in from Foxy's Precious Metals. Really cool dude. How oh, yeah, did, you, uh, did you start out pouring with a torch? I did. I did, yeah. I, I, I did the benzo um, and then got really frustrated because I kept running out of, out of fuel and um, was afraid of my uh, uh, acetylene torch because every time I use it, it pops through the 
through this through the safety valves and I really crap myself. So I went and bought an electric furnace almost like within the first couple of months, to be honest, because uh, I felt more comfortable working with that. And it let me ensure the metal was at the right optimum temp. Because for me, I, I wasn't good at being consistent with the torch, you know, reading the metal, reading the color, you know, and understanding that piece of it where, you know, you, you, you put a, a thermocouple in there to help you, you know, the game changes. So, you know, you, you started to show some of the um, sites for molds and, and 3D printers. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, we've talked about burning. What about actual designs? You know, we're going to get into that as well. Well, you know what we could do? Want to have some fun? Let's have some fun. I, I like having some fun. It's Sunday. Exactly. You know, it's yeah. It's a nice, nice, quiet exactly. evening. I was I was cruising through here. And this is this is something anybody can find. So you can go online. A, and there'll nice be thing. collections of models you can download, right? You oh, can buy them from Facebook groups. There's a Russian guy that's, that's selling some banging designs that are out there. A lot of folks use them. Um, 3D Cults is another. And, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different companies that make uh, solid models. So you can start with as a starting point. Like, let me just pull up an image. Because they give you the image and then the... Oh, I think I already have it open. This is a copy. Of they have all the images in here and then the STL, right? So if I wanted to make a mold of this, cool. Right? I could take this image as maybe a starting point and build on it or poach things from it, you know, kind of use it as an integral part or just use it as I use it on the, you know, whatever, whatever works for me. And then we had found earlier this cross. We thought this would be kind of fun to play with. So uh, yeah. What I'm going to do is we're going to take, and that's. Yeah, I'm digging that cross. I like that. Yeah, I, I well, we're I got something something planned here. So let me do. Here we go. Let's bring the cross in. Let's see if my CPU is going to going to compile with the video to see if we break my machine. <laughs> <laughs> What about using a torch to melt? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I, it's if you use the the crucible and a electric um, machine, you don't want to use a torch because if you point a torch inside that crucible, you're going to erode the graphite that is in the electric crucible because it it really doesn't react to oxygen to air when it's hot. That's why it has a top on it. Mm. So you want to you want to keep that thing covered and isolated when it's hot. Because it'll, it's always eroding. Yeah, this is taking way too long to come. You know, I, I actually yeah. had a series of um, questions for you, and, and while we wait for it to get all queued up, how many pieces do you think you have created throughout your career so far? Oh God, um, is it like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands by now. No, no, not like millions that. upon millions. I wish, but no. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you, it's funny that I was talking to, to Pops and he has probably the best representation of my work because when I first got started, he's one of the guys that was really, really supportive of me and, you know, kind of motivating me to try different things. And, you know, we yeah, I got a lot of different, uh, uh, they're almost like prototype designs, really. Oh, wow. Um, and he's he's got probably the best collection of my stuff because... I commonly do um, custom work, so a lot of times I don't I don't have you know a version of what I make. You know what I mean? Well, it's true. You're you're making a piece, a custom piece for someone. Um, yeah. You're not doing these like a mass production of like five thousand of these or a a couple of hundred of those. You know, you're pretty much doing a very specific, unique piece. Let's make that at least. All right. So we a coin. And then let's see. So that's cool. So we took that thing. We put a shape around it. So as this loads up, a uh, good question from Sean Berry, our good friend, Egg Leg. Do you just sell a bunch to get more shots of pour? How do you still collect and afford pour? And that's a great question. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's all about budget. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very um, anal about my spend. So um, I have a, uh, I want to say a strategy for my business, and then I have a strategy for my own personal wealth, and they're different, right? When it comes to collecting, I buy for both. So 
it depends. You know what I mean? So the, if, if I'm pouring, you know, my, I, in a perfect world, the volume of pours that I sell, you know, pay for my journey. Right. If, if I'm, if I'm doing it right. So ideally that's, that's my goal, you know, to have the, the, your computer's fighting with you. Bling, bling. Another really good question. Um, I like this one from Boxy. Do you ever do lost wax for jewelers, such as casting their wax rings and carvings? I do. Yes. I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I, I do casting for different folks. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I do I do lots of different things, actually. My my main business, you know, is is engraving and laser engraving and and I do a lot of, you know, custom art things for people, you know, in different businesses. And I just love playing with silver. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it just kind of, I, I, I'm enamored by the metal and what it does and how it behaves. And, you know, it just kind of, I don't know, just kind of, just, I, I really enjoy it. You know, it's, that's, that's it's, it is so cliche. You know, you have like yeah. your organs and your peace dollars. Like, you know, those are cool. You collect them and you got your eagles and you collect them. But when you have stuff like this, like the double dragons, the prototype that I have, I love that. It's a cool carry around piece. Um, the gremlin that I have, I love playing with this thing around the house. I, I hide them all over the place. But it, it, you're right. It is so different when it's in your hand. So different of a feeling. Jewelry is, seems to be taking off like crazy right oh, now. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, I, I really enjoy that space. Yeah, we, we make, I make pendants for folks. And like theoretically, you know, this same design, we could have changed the background to just take an outline of it, extend that, flatten the back. Then you've got you know, just the cross itself, put a loop on it, make a bail, you got yourself a pendant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and a lot of these, all of this stuff here is royalty free. So I can go through and grab, you know, any one of these drawings, any one of these um, images, you know, these models. You know, and so this, and this website it. is free, it's royalty free, public domain. Yep. yep. Nice. And I think that's one of the things to kind of talk about as well, uh, especially for new people who are getting in or people who are somewhat new who have been pouring, but just to understand, you know, the legal, you know, parts of it as well, what you can do, what you can't do, what you shouldn't do, but people yeah. do anyway. IP. Yeah. That's IP, a thing. Yeah. It's like, it, yeah, I, I, it's funny. I got, I get asked to do a lot of things that are, you know, we call them IP and you know, intellectual property, things that are owned by others. And, and for me, I honestly, I get a little it's weird. I, I don't like to do what other folks do. You know, if I see somebody do a pour and I was actually planning on doing that design, I'll actually chuck it and not do it. Cause it's like, you gotta, you gotta show a little respect for the other guys out there. And plus I want to be unique and original, you know? So like, uh, here's, here's a good example. Let me turn the camera back. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know if you can see if you want to show the camera real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Boxy has a good question too. Uh, once you show that item, so so this is an example of taking Ooh. taking the Spider Man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wood base that he hangs down this way. Hello, Emma. He hangs down this way, and that's the little focus. That's the Spider Man attached to, um, you know, silver webbing. If you that will. is cool. Yeah. So I mean, and there's the. And there's the Spider-Man in wax, ready to be ready to be cast. So. so, silly question: If you have, you know, a wax cast like that, how many times do you think, maybe on average, you can reuse that piece? Reuse? No, it's one-time use, bro. Yeah, this, this, this gets melted, right? This creates a negative form, and that negative form is the silver. It's gone. That's why it's called lost wax. So uh, you, you lose material. So when, when you start working in this medium, there's an additional cost you have to be aware of, right? There's the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The investment casting, which is one-time use, the wax, which is one-time use, the power involved to run your oven, the power involved to run your, it's all, it all stacks, you know? And there's a lot of things that are just not reusable. Gotcha. Uh, they're just not reusable. Uh, Boxy has a good question in regards to jewelry. Have you ever set stones before? I'm learning. 
Yeah, okay. that's, that's, I'm, I'm learning how to do that now. It's 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 really tough. Um, I got the right tools invested. I'm doing that, but I don't I don't have the the skills dialed in yet. Yeah. Good question, guys. Bring in some really good questions tonight. You know, I I'm a collector, so I don't really know your space as well as some of these guys in the chat do. But um, man, we got some really good questions. Oh, and then this is one of the first sandcast pieces I did. What about uh, Sean? Has a good question about movable parts. I know you showed yeah. me something. Yeah. Wants, Sean wants to do the robot dancing. Oh, oh. Yeah, this, this, here, here's an example. Something that will be moving soon, but this guy will have wheels. That's my dream buggy. Nice. But yeah, I mean, mo movable parts. I'm, I'm into it. I do it. I'm playing with it. Um, Is that Herbie the Love Bug? No, that's my Volkswagen Dune buggy that I have in the garage. It's a model after it. Oh, nice. So that yeah. is actually the car that you have. Yeah, yeah, in my garage. Yeah. And then uh, this one's got the turbo in the back, like my car. Yeah. That is dope. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be making uh, a car series. I'm working on it. Like I've got, I've got this dialed in where I can get this far. And now I just got to make sure I can do it multiple times. I did it twice. So that, that sells me on the idea. <laughs> what about, uh, you know, so you showed a website where people can kind of look at the different types of furnaces, uh, the website for 3D printers. What about movable parts, stuff like that, articulation? Well, that's the thing, right? That's on you. I mean, you can, you can go through and find something and then use tools like Mesh Mixer or others to to break things apart and you know, like you could you could take the head off of this guy and make it so it spins left and right if you know how to use the right tools you know it's, it's all about knowing your tools knowing your software um, and understanding how to enable the outcome that you want it's complicated it really is um, I, I, I took upon a little personal quest to make a, a Turbulon uh, watch out of silver that I'm working on yeah it's a tabletop watch so, and that's, I'm, it's proven to what I want to choke myself, you know, but yeah. Foxy is <laughs> giving you some love. Hey buddy. Yeah. The flower. That, that was the first, uh, uh, natural point organic. That was actually a flower. Kind of fun. Great. You guys are great. Keep bringing those questions coming. Uh, Sean, his GI Joe's will have movable parts, but not sure on the arms where rivets are. Yeah. Yeah. There's tricks. There's things you can do. <laughs> you will there, learn. You will learn. You you will learn. Do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's just like everything else. No matter what your trade is, whatever you do, you've got to go through some growing pains. You've got to learn, practice, learn, practice, and keep going with the flow. You got to tools, tools. have that knowledge. Yeah, it's tough, right? Because... It's, it's a learning curve, and if you do it right, you don't lose a finger in the process. And that's, yeah. You got something you're working on right here? Oh, yeah. So so here's so here's the piece we just finished, and let me do this. I'm thinking if we want to be cheeky. Yeah, let's do that. So cool. I'm thinking if anybody wants one of these things, I don't want to even print out the mold and pour a couple, but uh, yeah, it's a great design. Look, twenty-five minutes we're on, thirty minutes we're on. Already coming up with a design. Greg will customize it to whatever you want on there. You can say you got one during our YouTube live. <laughs> Sean says, "Thank God for Dremels." <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, me being a little Irish uh, Catholic boy, I love the little crosses. Those were really nice. I had to bug you to put something together. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, we have a couple of hidden gems in the work for 9-11, uh, for the Memorial Foundation, for the FDN, the Fire Department. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Sweet. You want, you want a sneak peek? Oh, you, uh, folks, what do you think? <laughs> should, should we get a sneak peek of a uh, little project I'm working on? Go ahead and turn the camera back on. Uh, we'll switch the camera back on. 
for the work. Oh, there we go, folks. So, guys, you know me. I like doing uh, stuff for charity. So I'm working very closely to do something for the NYPD, okay. for the FDNY Foundation, and for the 9-11 Memorial. That right there is going to go up for uh, some auction pretty soon. Sneaky peeks. Sneaky I'm peeks sure. are the best. Very cool. And we got we got to figure out what we're going to put on the back. Here. Absolutely, yeah, something, something for the event stuff. To kind of make you know it what you know because um, this video is going to live on and on and on. We'll have the people put some comments in on what they think should go in the back. Maybe we'll do like a vote. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, sure. The piece is for charity. It's you know it's for the people. So we love people's feedback and comments. It, it drives people. What are you doing? What can I do? That's what do I do good? Feedback. What do you do good? Absolutely. Um, you know, so I got a couple of a good hard hitting questions. So, you, you know, talked about your business model, what you do. You know, you live in a lot of different spaces. You do a lot. You have a lot of different tools. But, um, you know, I, I guess kind of taking it back, when did you start collecting? How did you get into this whole hobby? <laughs> well, it, it's it's kind of a sad story. I, uh, my, when I was, I want to say, nine or ten, my my grandpa Herb, uh, he had, had given me a tube of Morgan coins, a couple of them, and I, he didn't really explain what they were, so I thought it was a clock, right? So this this dumbass ten year old took his Morgan coins and he went down to the. Uh, I hope my parents don't watch this. I went went down to the bowling alley and I played Dragon's Lair till I won that damn game. <laughs> and that guy, that that son of a, he happily gave me four quarters for every morning and smiled. You know, he, he probably knew what kind of a dumbass I was, right? So yeah, that, that was my first introduction to it. When, when I when I my parents asked where the coins go, right? And then, then I said, well, what do you mean? You know, so it was a very difficult discussion. I got my education young, you know, and then I got interested. So actually, it's funny. It's like penance for for that that goofy little. And then it motivated me to keep collecting Morgans. I got a couple, you know, strategic things sure. I can do. And then, you know, just I'm I'm not a huge collector, but I just collect things that I like or things mm -hmm. that kind of speak to me. You know, different coins from countries or, or you know, something's got a story behind it. You know, things like that or hand points. Are really, really, I'm into the hand points. Something that somebody makes rather than something that comes from a mint. Because for me, mint minted stuff's you know bullion. I love bullion. I have it. You know, it's it's stackable, but I don't enjoy it. I don't, you know, it's like I, I look at, I look at my, my stacks of one ounce, 10, whatever in the safe. And I have much more fun, you know, in, in enjoying something like some of my favorite pieces from Vulcan, you know, sure. it's like, it, it just, I, I get more out of it. You know, I put it up on, I put it up on my house. That, that gremlin is all over the house, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. Yeah. And you motivated me to make that one. Yeah. I would have never made that if we hadn't talked. You know, it, so. it, it's so funny. I mean, I have a similar story. Um, and I just thought about this recently because when I was a kid, man, I did not get allowance. My parents are like, you want money? Forget about it. You, you know, give me three slaps. My father used to have a change jar. I wrecked that thing like every week. Probably took hundreds and hundreds of half dollar Kennedys and Franklins. Not realizing, oh, 50 cents. I, I can go to the arcade. I can buy candy. I can go buy Lego. Yeah. You know, and instead of taking the whole roll, I would take one from each roll. And like, oh, so you notice. Yeah. I thought he wouldn't notice. My father's like, why don't you take the whole roll? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> you learned the fast way. But I think about it now, like, oh man, I had, I could have been making, you know, a lot more back then. That's funny. Um, they're all, they're all silver too, right? All and then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh guys if you have questions you want to know something throw it in the chat we'll pop it up there um you know what are some of your favorite pieces that you've either made or you still have i think everybody knows my little gremlin is like one of my favorites now let's see this may sound silly but you know aside from the vulcan because i'll talk about that first because that's just absolutely freaking amazing this piece is so small and the level of detail that was pulled out of it is just ridiculous you know this is this is just crazy I and mean, i know how hard it is to do that and and that's just nuts you know so this this is this is absolutely my number one to be honest that, that's my number one piece which is kind of fun. sean it's has good. a good question which yeah. do you like pouring 
Sterling or 999? It depends. You see, because it depends on what I'm doing with. Because because 925 is a lot stronger. So if I'm doing things that are stressful and I'm and I'm worried about the metal bending or, or not taking on the load, I might want to do it 925 rather than 999 because 999 is really soft. You got to work harder and harden it and do different things to make it, you know, to the point where it depends on your use, really, right? If, you, if it's, it, it, it's going to bend, it's 999, it's soft, you know, so yeah. That's, that's good to know too because I don't think everybody knows that, that, you know, one is stronger than the other or harder than yeah. the other. Yeah, uh, it's actually softer. Yeah. Yeah, Sterling. Yeah. Online? or local shops ah uh, see for me the i don't get around to the lcs out here much at all not out in the area of california man and i buy most of my stuff online from other other artists and stuff like the stuff that i like mm -hmm. um if i'm stacking i'm buying directly from the mint you know or from a, from a, a seller that i that i work with really close to get good pricing so um you know because when i want to buy in bulk i don't I don't go through a man. I go through, you know, somebody who's closer to the, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah you know, it, it's funny. I, I think everybody's kind of, you know, they've purchased online, they purchase yeah. from their buddies or, or they go to their shop. I think it all de depends. I mean, I think everybody yeah. likes to walk into a shop. They can see what they got right there. Um, you know, you it's go nice. online, it's click, click, click. Yeah. yeah. It, it is It is a different experience tactile, right? When you're touching something. But, you know, a lot of this stuff's an emotional buy anyways, right? I don't need to buy it. I must buy it. I must buy it. <laughs> yeah. How fast can I get it? That's yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I always appreciate this, too, because I've talked to a few people just kind of putting this stuff together. Mm -hmm. And, like, for me, I, I'm a buyer and I'm a collector. But I would like to know, like, who is working with who? There's so many different people collaborating with other people in different spaces. So I thought this was a really good question. Uh, this actually came up in Instagram from a few people. They wanted to know who are your favorite artists to work with? Doesn't have to be just um, in the metals, but if you collaborate with other people. Yeah, I'll tell you, for me, I, I collaborate with folks in different spaces. Too. It's not just just metal, you know, because I, I like to work with you know, different artists if you, you know, some of the folks here. Different artists if you wine art or sculpting or you know 3d modeling you know, i work with a bunch of different folks but if i can't deliver on something and i've got somebody asking me beyond my my ability i'll come up with the idea the general format and work with my partners to help bring a product to the point where i can do something i mean yeah. I get, everybody gets stuff you know at yeah. some point. Yeah. you know it can, it, it, it's always going to get beyond what you what you know so you can learn something you know so that's what i look like now i you know i haven't personally been to any of like the major like coin shows but mm. do they typically have poor artists there selling and those well, type of events i'll tell you i've been i went to the vegas show uh before all the COVID, like almost like three years ago it was yeah it was an epic trip um and there wasn't a big presence you know mk was there and he had a big old table set up um there were i there was a lot of like some of the mainstream stuff with the coin guys like they had a little a little box and you'd see like a bunch of like a bunch of sunshine not sunshine um um like mutant metals there's a ton of his stuff that one guy's doing like a little half ounce and one ounce little little rounds and stuff i saw a lot of polar bear poor stuff in a big pile in somebody's kitchen um it, it was really random though there wasn't a lot of you know hand poured product to be seen but i i'll tell you though the last the coin shows i'm seeing online with folks it seems like you know, people are penetrating that market, which is exciting. You know, there's like guys like Reckless, you know, and Haley Bug and those guys. There, I see them, you know, plugging in at coin shows and making a really good presence. And that's awesome because it opens up the door for a lot of the people that are in this chat, including me, right? So we can start getting our stuff seen. You know, I, 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 I those yeah. names came right off the top of my head. You know, you, Haley Bug, MK. Um, you know, like just the three people that I typically will buy some stuff from just because like, I know you guys, um, you know, through social media, but yeah. everyone's kind of got their own little flavor on like how they yeah. do things. It's so, true. Yeah. It's true. And I'll tell you, you get to the point where, you know, when, when folks find their vein, you can look at their work and you know, it's their work. You know, there's some artists like YPS, you know, it's his work. Yeah. Like, look at it and you just know reckless. You just know, right. It's, it's his stuff. 
You know what I mean? Hey, we look the same thing, you know? Because people have a certain look and feel, and, you, and that that's awesome to get to that point, because that's success, right? When people look at your product and go, wait a minute, I saw, I, I saw YPS do that. That, that, that. Wait a minute, YPS did that. Yeah. Right, you know? A lot of people think it's like, you know, it's just my stamp on it, and that's mine. Like, no, yeah. it is like how you execute a vision of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of steps. It's not easy. It's fun for figuring that out because we're, we're we're in the maker world now, right? Everybody can buy a 3D printer. Yeah. Everybody can buy a $500. Not everybody, but a $500 furnace versus a $10,000 commercial furnace, right? It's not a bad way to get into it. See, you know, and if if you're making five bucks an ounce, you know, or pour a bit of silver and make it back, you know. I mean, and learn why you're doing it. Figure out if it's a hobby or a business, and fall in love with it like I do. You know? <laughs> I, I have a, a follow-up question to this question, but um, I didn't get a chance to put it in here because I didn't know if they were actually going to come in here or not. But what is one of your best selling pieces? I guess it could be, you know, amount or a dollar amount. Well, it's funny. It's a cross because the, the custom pieces are kind of one-off stuff. And I've had some, some fun challenges there. But for me, it's been the Zodiac series. It's been a really good gift. So, um, yeah, we are in a couple of sentences. Now, this is something uh -huh. recent you were doing, right? This yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, on the back side, we got my logo. That's all 3D. And then this is this is Leo. Nice. Leo. And we all have kind of a steampunk, you know, kind of skull out kind of, kind of look. And then we got, there's Aries. Oh, that is cool. This was my first attempt at an M link, so I'm gonna strip it and redo it. But yeah, <laughs> you live and learn. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the yeah, other things I seen you make, I don't know if you have gone forward. You were doing the Royal Flush King. Plan. Yeah, I, I just finished sorting out the molds. Those are nice. And, um, we're gonna be making those next week, actually. So oh, yeah. So well, sexy. I can show you the mold if you want to see. Oh. So sexy. Okay. I will not turn that down. The cards. Show me those. Ace has a cover of cards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, Andrew does. And then, we, and then we, we got to talk about the future best. Can, can I do a plug? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Plug away. Go for it. We, we just got our provisional patent on a product we're taking to market, which we're calling the last currency. So this is cool, so, so we're making base plates out of silver for your mags. And we where's it? There's a camera. Base plates out of silver with your mags. And it's got a spot and it's the actual, actually the whole base plate. I'm gonna give you the whole screen, my friend. This is a beautiful yeah. piece. And this, this is this is one of those um, you know generic STLs. So I'm gonna be doing my own. And then we can do yours. So if you've got a, a design you wanna do on the bottom of your base pad, I can put that on here for you. And you know, kind of get your mag and get you all set. Um, gonna, so there's a little pocket that we're putting on the inside so that when the, 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 uh, the base plate hits that, you can hold like fractionals, you put fractional gold in there, different things like that. Because when you ran out of bullets, you know, that's all you got is some currency. <laughs> so, so it's kind of like, and it looks cool. I mean, you got it. It's it absolutely cool. one of the coolest right. things. That is so awesome. That's, and that's actually 3.9 silver. And what I did do, because somebody asked about the strength stuff, I have AutoCAD. What I do is I test things with FEA and different software. So I know for a fact <laughs> that <laughs> this will work, right? So, yeah. That's so cool. then, then we actually had good Chris over here testing the competition. Hey, Chris. <laughs> That's not Chris. So, so, <laughs> and he didn't break and he didn't make a fool out of himself. So, so we did good. Uh, everybody wanted one. <laughs> everybody wanted one. So, yeah, so we're going to be cranking those out soon. They'll be up on the website. I'm sorting out um, some die making stuff I need to do. And that's a process. And then we'll be cranking them out. Um, price point, not sure yet. We're going to do two different models. One that is just the base without the high relief. That's a little thicker so we can engrave it with something on there for you. Versus putting something on there. When, the sky's the limit. Anything you can come up with, I can stick on the bottom of the face plate. So, yeah. One of the follow-up questions uh, that came up in regards to this, um, and I guess it's, I don't want to say personal preference, because there's a lot that goes into consideration, you know, the market, but what do, or what should be the price point an artist would charge per ounce? That's tough. 
I mean, it's, it's all about pouring. Yeah. I, see, I, I, I have different price points depending on how I'm pouring. You know, if I'm pouring into like sandcaster graphite, that's a, for me, the way I do my process, it's a lot less effort to, to go from start to finish versus, you know, something that's uh, you know, like our lawn man here, right? When I, when I go through the process of turning that into summer, mm -hmm. because the finished process takes a lot more time, yep. a lot more time. It's not, it's not just a tumble and go. You know, a lot of these pieces are really fragile, and you can't throw it in, in the big old tumbler I got in the garage. Yeah. I got one of those big, giant, you know, vibratory tumblers. And it would just pummel it. I ruined one thing. It came out all, you know. I should have kept it because the lawn man was all you know, jacked that money. <laughs> but, it's yeah. um, uh, <laughs> Alyssa. Hello, Alyssa. Perfect timing. You know, kind of takes it to the next question that came up in regards to jewelry. I know we talked a little bit about this earlier. Uh, but silver jewelry, copper jewelry, gold jewelry, yeah. it's on fire right now. It's a great market, it seems. Everybody's into it. I got something recently from her. I loved it. I'm not a jewelry person. I got it, and I've been wearing it, like, every day. It's beautiful silver dragon piece I got. Awesome. Yeah, there's um, so much talent out there. It really is. But that's what I'm really enjoying about community, too, is that people are starting to show their work. And they might have been doing it in private, you know, or just kind of enjoying what they see or whatnot. Mm -hmm. people are getting more bold when you know, they're posting their product and sharing and they keep it coming I'm, i enjoy it i love yeah. seeing a lot of people like that and there's so yeah. much talent out there you, you're definitely right i say this to everybody listen if you do something even if it's not 100 percent perfected it's still good to show your work because it's progress you know what did you do to get here people are going to comment forget all those you know haters and the trolls but yeah. take it with a grain of salt because it'll help you with your progress. And I, I'm a trainer. I teach a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, get a tough skin. Someone says something, forget about it, but yeah. it'll help you make a better product at the end. Yeah. And, um, and in the end, if, if you, if you don't enjoy it, you know, you're not going to do it. If you enjoy yeah. it, it's, you're not going to worry about what people say. Cause it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's about what you do with it. You know what I mean? Nice. You want to strangle his gremlin, but if he got really out of hand and for some reason he got deformed, you just throw him right back in the furnace, right? Absolutely. And knuckle the bastard down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, are there any differences, or I guess what are the differences to working with uh, copper to silver and gold in regards to jewelry? All different. Yeah, they're all different. Yeah, every metal has its own, you know ideal melting temp depending upon the size and the complexity and how much filigree you've got and, you know just it, it, it's such a complex question to answer because every metal is different you know and then every metal could have a variant within itself you know so it's like silver you know 925 britannia 999 90 percent but the lower you go down it pours like sludge it actually has a different viscous kind of feeling to it you know as, as it has more impurities in it. so yeah. Like nine 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 looks a lot like you know nice flowing water when you pour it. Even nine two five shows a little bit. It, it's I don't want to say gummy, but it just has more like surface tension to it. And it mm -hmm. Flows different. Yeah. You know everything just and you got to learn all that. And I'm still learning about copper. My my best attempt at copper was this one, and it ain't all that great. Okay. You know? So it's I'm I'm learning. You gotta you gotta practice. You gotta. That, play with that reminds me of the moon in uh, Smashing Pumpkins Tonight Tonight video. Yeah, yeah, it's from uh, oh the, the 1900s movie with the, the rocket that lands yep. in the eye. I, I, I can't remember the, the guy's name. The G. We got the, the director's <laughs> name. That, that's what it's from. Uh, no it. Got yeah. a question? Do you work with gold like 18 karat? I know no, that's a whole subcon. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've, I've worked with 24 and I've worked with 18, and and again, both a little different, you know. Yeah, but they were small pieces too. Like I did some rings and some some pendants. Nothing that was like an ounce or more, because when you start getting bigger, you know, things cool at different rates. You know, and it all behaves different. You know, so yeah, it's, it's funny. Better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this year. Like I've heard of 18K, 24K. To me, they were just, yeah. you know, numbers. But yeah. this year in the gold club, that's actually how I really learned all about gold. Yeah. That it's it's the same, but it's very different as well. What's up, Kalor? Um, 
I know you kind of you jumped into this. You know, where did you find your first designs? I know you showed your screen a little earlier. Yeah, I went online. Yeah, actually, it's funny because the the very first designs I tried to you know hand draw and then scan and make you know two D and you know bass release things like that, and then mix that up with because I also do CNC work. So for cool. me, I made my because I know how to do three D modeling and and do all that kind of stuff too. So I would make metal dies on my CNC. And I still use some of those today because those never go bad. You know, if I can make a metal die versus something out of plastic, you know, I can make the crap out of it all day long and it's not going to be for So, You know, it's funny, like before I kind of got a behind the scenes tour of how you guys did this stuff, I really thought some of you got a mold of clay and a chisel and were like, you know, just hand carving all the stuff together. I do that too, though. I have, I'll show you the box of clay behind me. Yeah, I, I have things where I'll take clay. Wow! So you take you take clay, right, and then you got to make it's not this isn't the sex toy. You you make a mold, right? <laughs> and then what I do is I inject wax into this, let it cool, and I pop out a form. So I've got behind me, you know, I want to say, you know, a whole couple of years worth of a lot of <laughs> well, silicon molds. So you make them out of out of uh, clay first, and then that's your master to make your. Silicon mold from them. You got your cloning machines ready to go. You know, so there's cool. Uh, there's got another question. Did, did you melt down some of your jewelry to get 18k, or did you melt pure gold with copper? No, I actually bought the shot at that uh, that uh, uh, quality already. Yeah, I, I bought through a refiner, so I knew I was getting the right stuff because it was for a client that wanted me to cast something in there that wax. And I didn't want to take a risk of mixing it while we getting the property trouble. So. They tested good when it left the shop. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple more questions, folks. Awesome. If you got questions, ask. We're hanging out well, Sunday that, night. Throw them in the comments. Cool. I'll pin them to the board. Let's do it. Yeah, I'll tell you, that that's a good one, uh, uh, Alyssa, because I'll tell you, the University of YouTube, I'm telling yeah. you, when, when I can't get answers, it's so hard because if you're not like, I don't call myself a silversmith because it's disrespectful to silversmiths. You know, I'm not formally trained. I didn't go to jewelry school. I've been an artist all my life. I've dealt with clay, oil, I hand draw, I paint, you know, I, I make things. I've always been a creator of some kind in different media. So for me, it was just taking, you know, my creativity and folks kind of learning a new technique. I was already doing machine work. So for me, taking, you know, the software to make a mold and then I had, I'm, I'm still learning. Everybody is. You know, you're always learning. But now I'm learning how to take my molds and turn them into, you know, metal, like tangible metal that you can hold in your hand. You know? yep. But yeah, I'll tell you, YouTube. Just, just, I trolled YouTube for months, months, and I still do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of the things, you know, I'm, I, I'm a professor at a local college. I, I look like a fool, right, from Brooklyn. But when it's time to work, you know, I throw on the suit and tie, and back and forth from my day job i got two full-time jobs the bus and the train is the perfect classroom throw on your headphones watch some videos and that actually gave me the idea to start my youtube channel doing this stuff yeah. is people going back and forth that just want to learn how to do this stuff bus and train that's your classroom right yeah. you build up your skills little by little um it's expensive to go through formal training i i looked at some stuff yes. and they do um, a glass blowing certification course in my neighborhood. They do a stained glass certification in my neighborhood. They do like a silversmith course. It's expensive. <laughs> it, it's very tough. So if you're shelling out that kind of money and you're new, it's nice to have just kind of like the basics, the one-on-one. So, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate you giving some tips. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's hard to find info. You know, I, 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 a couple of people have my home number to call me sometimes. You know, and I, I have the same, you know, so we don't reciprocate. Yeah. You know, so it's like, uh, it's fun. You know, it's fun to share the knowledge. It's, it's fun to get people into the, into the space too, because it's fun seeing a new stuff. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. people keep surprising, you know, like, uh, investment caster. I've you seen him, he's making these, uh, tanks. Chris over here is like, you gotta make tanks. You're so much, you know, but, We're yeah, going to war. Make the tank. Yeah. yeah he, he, he was like, the tanks, the tanks. So it, it, it's awesome. You know, the stuff people are doing. And his stuff moved. Me, the turrets moved and the execution was just on point. Um, yeah. you know, the guy's talented. Yeah, just amazing. You know, Dixie Solar Miner, another good yeah. 
if you guys don't know who is either G. So if you, if you want to learn how to the real techniques and someone that is a silversmith and knows how to do stuff, go go take a look at his channel and give him a pop because you'll learn. I learn every time I watch my own stuff. Yeah, if you're I, I, I like going to the major leagues with those guys. Yeah, yeah really nice stuff. He, and he has somebody who's like formally trained too, so you, know, you get to see how the pros do. You know, he's got the real shot. He's got a whole you know, giant collection. Like, so. uh, I had another question for you. Very important one. What tool could you not live without? Because you got all the goodies. It, it'd probably be my software that I used to do all of my design work. Cause, software? Yeah, because if, if I'm not able to create the thing that I'm making, I think I'd lose interest. I really do. I think if I was, if I wasn't creating and just, you know, kind of, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably stop doing. I'd stop doing other things because, because it wasn't creative enough. For me. So that's probably what it would be. Yeah, because yeah, I would think, you know, with a furnace, they break. Crucibles break. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. I got three or four of them in broken state in the garage, and two work. <laughs> three are dead. That's typical because it's just the cheap little furnaces. You know, they die. Yeah. Oh, here's a really, really good question. I'm, I didn't even think of this. Here we go. No. Love it. Alyssa says, what's something you wish you knew when you first oh, started? That's a good, good question. I, I think it, it, if I would have taken the time to really understand the, the metal I was working with, like the ideal temps, the flows, and, and I sh pour graphite first. That's what you do. You pour graphite because you learn so much, you know, and, and I, I jumped into sand and I struggled and I, I figured it out, you know, but, but I think if I would have stuck with something and just mastered it and then moved on to the next thing, it would have been a quicker journey, you know, but I, I, I went, I just did everything all at once and I started learning all the different board styles at the same time. So I just didn't, you know, I didn't pause. I just ran for it. it was, yeah, how much? Cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how much uh, gold and silver do you think you have embedded, like in your walls and floor, that we can go scrape out? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can show you the, the dust collector underneath mean, the jewelry bench from my saw is. Yeah, I haven't refined that yet. It's getting pretty fat. I gotta send uh, it to like uh, send it to Mac or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what about? You know, obviously we're here on YouTube today. But if people want to find you, I, I think most of the people know they can find you on Instagram. But um, just let the people know again, what social media websites are you on? Uh, do you have your own website they can order things from? Yeah, yeah, we got a website up and the inventory is, it has to be updated. I apologize in advance. We do have silverstackholic.com. That's our commercial site. You can order on it. It's live. We also do more. It seems that people reach out to me more through Instagram for the custom stuff. You know, that's where we get, get caught up. And then we have a YouTube channel as well. We're trying to get our subscribers up so we can monetize that. So cool. give us a click and a subscribe. The Silver Stackaholic. So um, the YouTube page is the same thing, right? Silver Stackaholic? Yep. Awesome. Silver Stackaholic. Better subscribe, like, share, subscribe, all those crazy YouTube things that they tell you. I, exactly. I feel like a spokesperson. <laughs> um, folks, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Greg is going to go under some rapid fire right now got some rapid fire questions i like to kind of close with this stuff well, um, yeah, ginger beer. you better grab a drink so i'm grabbing mine too i'm gonna grab the last ginger beer right, i gotta load up for this one uh, this is fun so You're scaring me there we go and and these are all like tongue-in-cheek you know fun type of uh questions so I think I'm going to kind of do this with all my videos at the end with all the guests, you know, rapid fire. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. You just tell me this or that, whatever right. comes to mind first. We want, right. to get, we want to get to know the people. So first question, silver bars or silver rounds? Rounds. Rounds. Okay. Yeah. What about, what is the better cartoon? Thundercats or Ninja Turtles? Thundercats. Can you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Turtles. Turtle soup. Uglier, yeah. uglier animal, naked mole or the blobfish? Blobfish. Have you seen that apparition? Oh my god! <laughs> it's just, it's just wrong. Looks like somebody sneezes with eyeballs. You know? yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Better game, D and D or oh. Magic the Gathering? I know where this one's supposed to go. Yeah. The problem is, I started with D and D. 
right? And I was really into it. And then I tried to gather it. I tried it, bro. I bought the cards. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? So I got to say D&D. <laughs> I got to say D&D. Uh, I, I hear you. And we're not judging, man. We're just asking questions. We're not judging. We're not judging. We're sure. Sure. Yes. D&D. 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 You got the dice. Yeah. <laughs> the silver dice. What would you rather create and pour? An angry giraffe or an angry kangaroo? Probably the kangaroo because I put them in the pouch. And it come from. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. You know, I, I thought giraffe, that'd be pretty cool. The long neck. But yeah, kangaroo. Yeah. You'd have to make got the complexity to undercut. That'd be more fun. You gotta add a little Joey in there. Yeah, a little gold Joey. A little gold Joey. Yeah, make him pop out. Hey, that'd be awesome. It's yeah. totally cool. Who wins in a fight, JFK or Teddy Roosevelt? Wheels. That's a good one. Last <laughs> week I asked uh, George Washington against Ben Franklin. So that's a tough one. Yeah, Ben. You know, Washington was the general. So I mean. But, but Ben could maybe you know, create his way out of it, you know, shock him or something. It's the old, you know, brains versus brawn. Yeah. Um, folks, if you have any questions, uh, now's the time to ask them. We're wrapping up uh, the end of our second interview with C Mac and his guests. We got Greg, the Silver Stackaholic. Um, you know, spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. Like, share, subscribe, all those crazy YouTube things. I feel like I go crazy when I say that now. Like every other YouTuber, like, share, subscribe, comment. Do all that crazy stuff. Um, Greg, really appreciate you taking the time out. You know, I've been bugging you all week. Um, you know, you were one of the first people that came to mind because I know you. I appreciate like the opportunity. That stuff. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I, I love the session you're putting together, and I'm really looking forward to the next one. You know, see, see, you know, I, I, I got some you ideas. So when, once I get a little better at this and, and I, you know, make my way into it, I'm thinking maybe we do some battles poor artist versus poor artist they come on right? they show their best piece the people will judge it we'll make it fun we should do some one of those uh a live pour where we take the design we did tonight i'll make i'll make the mold if you want we can do a live pour on that thing too might be kind of fun is a awesome. artifact yeah. awesome um I don't have any more questions. I'm out. We hit the hour mark. We were only going to do like 35, 45 minutes. But when we were setting this up, we came up with so many cool ideas and topics upon topics. So once again, I really appreciate everything. Greg, what do you want to say to everybody here tonight? God. I feel like I'm the fifth element when we put the mic out, you know? But, uh, <laughs> no, seriously, I appreciate the support and keep, keep the ideas coming. You know, it's all about being creative and, and, and engaging, you know, collabs are fun, reach out to everybody around you. And, and I, I really enjoy the, the act of collecting the silver, finding new forms, finding new designs and stuff. And that, that's what makes me kick. So I'd say, you know, right. keep, keep inventing, keep creating, you know, find, find what makes you happy and just do it. And yeah. Don't worry about all the BS and all that. Yeah, no drama. No drama. No yeah, drama. All the dramas, it's, 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 enjoy it. You know, that's what it's about about enjoying what you do so. it looks like we do have one last question Melissa says do you do custom molds for artists i do actually yeah um i do custom molds for let's see here's what i did for reckless you guys probably know that one that was my mold oh yeah yeah uh, let's see what's another one i did uh, reckless also made these i made these molds for these pieces oh nice yeah the road trips yeah there's very few of those out there um, yeah, I, I do molds for different folks. Um, they, they hit me up and I'll do either a sandcast mold or I haven't done a lot of graphite for people because, yeah, it's cool. I love like graphite graphics. for people because it's just, I don't like cutting graphite because of the dust. It's really bad for you. It'll kill you. So, oh, yeah. You know, we, we mentioned yeah. it. Safety tips. When, when you start, you know, we talked about fire extinguishers and aprons. I can't mention this enough because both of us, respiratory. eyewear and respiratory. Yeah. Yeah, because when, when that metal is melting and you're looking at it with that furnace, it's outgassing, folks, right? So whenever you're melting something, the gases come out of it, and they're not good. Yep. There's a reason why refiners wear equipment and insulate themselves from the shit they're warming up. You know what I mean? Don't inhale that stuff. Don't, Don't inhale it. Um, <laughs> vent, make sure you have a vent out yeah. somewhere. Very important. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. I see a lot of people pouring in small enclosed places like, 
I saw this one guy who's poor he was, he was on Instagram going live. He was in his house over carpet, right? And I'm just waiting. I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just like eating the peanuts, waiting, you know, for the 911 call, you know, because there's no way that's going to end well, yeah. you know? So it's just, don't take risks. You know, insulate your space. Go, go to the, go to the barbecue supply place where you buy a fire brick and go spend 80 cents a brick, you know, yeah. and just buy 20 bricks and make a little safe place. Make a boundary between you and the metals. You don't get hurt because you will get hurt. You will. I got a little burn on my thigh or my, my shin, but I, I, I don't, I got a nerve problem. So I didn't feel it. It was pretty funny. I got a bead that hit me. I got a mark. I looked at it, watched it burn in Carter. I just felt thing. It was awesome. <laughs> I, it's funny. I have seen, I can probably count at least seven people that I know seven different people that I've seen poor in the house, like in the apartment, like while they're watching TV in their sure. living room. Think about oh. the other people, right? Let's you get a problem in an apartment. It's not just you anymore. You know, it, 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 you're, you're increasing the risk dramatically. You know, you're endangering other people at that point. You know, just be responsible. On, on my other YouTube channel, like my work one, my real work job one, I have a video on there that I actually use. It's in regards to hot work, burning, cool. Hot work, you know, it's the fire department, New York City fire department, cutting, welding, grinding, burning, anything that creates a spark. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of the key things, just, you know, people doing these types of things in their apartment. So, you know, you yeah. lose the whole building because one person, you know, doesn't That's think it's a hot plate in the living room. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. Do it if fish sandwich gone wrong. That's what that is. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Greg, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're the man. Thank you so much. Thanks for helping. Like, appreciate like, it. Like, share, subscribe, check out my page, check out Greg's page, Silver Stack. All the fun way. Take care. See you guys. Bye.